So in this lesson, I'm going to be teaching how to make really basic, simple drum loops in Studio One using Studio One for professional. However, what I'm going to teach um, you can use on the free version, Studio One for Prime. Um, also works, of course, on Artist as well. So you can do this with the free version. If I was to be using one of the paid versions, Artist or Professional, um, I'd probably use a drum machine, um, a VST, uh, a third-party VST drum machine, or I would use um, Impact by Presonus. Um, but given that's only on the um, Professional version, I think perhaps on the Artist as well, um, I'm going to focus on Presence. That way our free users of Studio One Prime can also take advantage of this. Okay, so I have a blank song up here. Well, one thing I should also mention is I'm going to be teaching this using only the computer keyboard. So I don't have a piano keyboard or a MIDI controller. I'm going to be using just the keyboard. Um, and Presonus have made this pretty easy, really. All I have to do is press caps lock, and it brings up a little QWERTY keyboard MIDI controller. Um, you'll notice there are some white keys here. Um, and you can locate them in that order on your own computer keyboard. And then there's the black keys representing, obviously, your sharps and flats on a piano keyboard. You can see that we have two and then three and then two here. Um, and you can use those to play any MIDI instrument in Presonus. Now, you'll notice that they're not playing anything right now, and that's because I don't have any instruments loaded in. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to load in an instrument. Um, and we're going to load in a drum kit. So using the artist instruments here, I'm going to expand that out. And then, oh, I should go back a step. In order to find your instruments, um, you would find them either here or under the instruments tab. They take you to the same place. Um, you'll see that there's Presonus instruments here. I've got a few others installed because I have Professional. Um, but if you have the Prime version, you'll just have the Presonus option there. Um, and then presence. Um, you do need to install the extra in expansion packs to get all of these instruments, but they are free with Studio One for Prime. Um, expand out the drum kit here, and I'm going to pull in just a basic kit for now. And here it is. So a bit funny, isn't it, to be playing a drum kit using a piano keyboard, um, but they've developed this standard across the world, really, where certain keys mean certain parts of a standard drum kit, and then there's other keys that are just other instruments, um, and we'll go over that now. So on my QWERTY keyboard, you'll notice it says C4. So the C means the or octave, meaning which octave you're on on the piano, C meaning the note C, and C4 is middle C. You know that C that's pretty much in the middle of the piano and it's like the first note that you learn when you're learning to play piano? It's that C that we're talking about. So if I press Q, <coughs> oh, and it makes that ugly noise there, that is C4, and whilst it's not in the middle of this particular um, instrument that I've got up, I'm trying to expand that out for some reason, I can't, I can't remember how to do it. Is it here? Doesn't matter. <coughs> um, so that is middle C, essentially. If I was to load up a piano, you'd find that that note there sounds just like middle C. Um, then we need to familiarize ourselves with these two buttons, which changes that octave. So instead of looking from <coughs> Q <coughs> to P there, or rather C5 is there, C4, C5. If I was to go up an octave, C5, that means my Q is now here, right? And I'm now playing the octave above that. Or conversely, if I go down to C3, now C3 is there, all the way up to <coughs> annoying whistle sound that we have there back on C4. Um, I'll go down another octave. So now I'm between C2 and C3. Let's see what sounds we have. Now we're getting some more drum kitty types of sounds now. We'll go down another one. Right, and now we've got good old kick drum. Good old snare drum there. Right, so really we have to be down at C1, so between here and here, to be getting our good old drum kit sounds. Um, find a good hi-hat.
then we can play our standard drum kit. Which brings me on to the next task, making our MIDI loop. So we're going to record a MIDI loop. Before we do, it's very important that you know that we need to record this to a metronome. That is an absolute must, um, because if you're making a loop, if you want it to be in time with anything else you're going to use, it has to be done to the metronome. So if I um, just think of my tempo now, and now if I click on the word tempo, it will basically tell me about what tempo I'm clicking at. It looks like I'm around 110 there. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know, around there. Let's go for 110. Um, and it's also a really good idea to have a metronome counting. So, um, if I click the little spanner, a pre-count, that just gives me time to get ready, find my notes, um, and it counts me in. Three, four, one, two, three, and then start. Boom. Um, notice that my accent click is slightly different to my beat click. That's really good for knowing where the start of the bar is. Um, and then I need to turn my metronome on by clicking that one because it's blue there. Now, if I hit record, I should get my pre-count. All right, that's good volume too. I'll just practice my little riff there. We want to try and get it as accurate as possible, and you're going to see why in a minute. Two, three, four. All right, that was a bit off towards the end, um, but that's okay. That's going to play into my next demonstration. So we've got a, a drum loop there. It's ready to go, or is it? Um, it's often a really good idea to check your work MIDI-wise, especially if it's a drum kit. I mean, if it's an orchestra and you want that sort of human slight inaccuracies in there, that's completely understandable too. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to quantize this, which means getting those notes to be bang on, almost with robotic precision. So um, I just clicked the editor then. You can get into that two different ways. You can click edit down the bottom or you can double click on the track and Personas brings it up. Same thing, and you can see all the notes that I've put down here. Um, so you can see that that's a C1, and you can see that that's, well, a F sharp, I suppose. Um, and you can see what I've done. So if you ever do a bung note, you can just jump in here and delete it. Um, and what I'm checking for is to see that we're pretty much on the money in terms of on the beats. So beat one is there, beat two, beat three, beat four. Now bar two, bar two, beat um, one, two, three, four, bar three, two, three, four, bar four, two, three. Um, and you can see down here, I've fallen a bit off the beat. You know, I'm a bit out of time. I was a bit late there, perhaps getting a bit lazy. Whereas at the start, you know, pretty close. That one's bang on the beat. That's on the half beat, on the beat, on the half beat, on the beat, on the half beat, just before the beat, but still not too bad. So we've got a couple of options open to us here. I can manually go through and move these so that they're closer, like that, you know, and th that got me pretty good, didn't it? Um, and you can do that, though, depending on how much work you've got to do, it could be quite time consuming. That one's on the half beat, that one's on the half beat, that one's, you know, like it does take some time. But if, if you know, you've got a few notes that are really out um, and they're just, they're not even close, then, you know, you either have to do this way or you've got to start again. There is another way, however, and it's an automatic way, and it's called quantize. Um, and you can do it just by hitting Q, but you need to select which notes you want to quantize first. So just above the editor here, there is some information on quantizing. So I can quantize to the nearest 16th note or eighth note or quarter note, or what the hell does that mean, you ask? Well, um, the nearest beat would be to put these to the nearest beat. So these ma major lines here are the beat. Beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, beat 4. So if I quantize to the nearest beat, it would snap all the notes to the nearest one of those lines. And I'll show you there. Um, in the American terminology, a, a beat is a quarter note or a crotchet. In, um, in Australian language, we call them crotchets, right? So there's our crotchet beats. Notice that when I selected that, it showed the lines it's going to quantize to. 
Now, if I press Control A, which is to select all, and then hit Q, it puts them all onto those beats, and it's completely changed my song, and it's really not what I want at all. So I'm going to undo that. Um, and I can see straight away that I've got notes on the half beat, so I don't want to quantize to the nearest quarter note or crotch it. I want to quantize to the nearest eighth note. Up come the next set of lines. Are they the lines I want to quantize to? I would say yes. You know, there's no notes consistently falling halfway in between. Now, Control A to select all, and then Q. And now I am a robot. All my notes are perfectly in their place. Let's see how that sounds. Perfect. All right, and my drum loop is perfect. There is a little bit of humanity in there because you can see that um, I'm taking my fingers off the notes a little bit differently. Um, in some sound sets, that will change the way it sounds. I don't think so in this case. Um, and if you didn't understand what I just said, just let it go. Don't worry about it. That's really not that important. Um, know also that you can, you know, you can move these around and change their size and put extra things in. Um, you really can go to town. Um, the world is your oyster, as they say. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on how to create um, drum loops using the free version of Studio One Prime. Enjoy. <laughs>